controlling audio on your PC has never gotten easier. I'll show you how to do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Joe Finley, and today we are going to take you through the Beacon Mix. It's an incredibly simple audio controller, and I don't want you to get it mixed up with the Beacon Mix Create. We're saying mix a lot here, but the mix is not a lesser version of the Mix Create. It's not a mini version or anything like that. It is a separate device. They have similar screens. They've got the same kind of knobs, but what they do are totally different. So the primary difference between the two is that the Beacon Mix is an audio controller, whereas the Mix Create is a proper mixer that has has an output that you send to OBS or some kind of DAW or something like that. The mix is meant strictly for you. What it's meant to do is take all your devices, put them into one place so you can just control them with knobs and you can see the volume on the screen here. Setup and control for this thing could not be easier, so let's just get right into it. Okay, so I popped on the old cans, as they say in the business, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the software here, and the software is really, really simplistic. So what we're gonna do first is create a new profile, because that's what we did with the rest of our Beacon tutorials. So we're gonna come up here and click the add a new profile button here the little plus and we got a new profile we can name it whatever we want and let's just call this learning now we can see here that we have a completely blank profile here and it's as blank as saying knob one knob two knob three knob four you can also see it represents that on the screen underneath we have a blank listening device section and then we have a bunch of things down here that we didn't see in the other versions of the mixer and this is actually a drag and drop system which is actually wonderful these are all of your available audio devices on your computer right now and you can just drag any of them into any of these spots and then you have control of them so let's start first with our beacon mic so we're gonna take this here and put it here so we can actually see it now it's here but let's make this look a little bit nicer first so I'm gonna double click up here and I'm gonna call this microphone spelled it right and everything and then even here you can double click on this and you can just call this you can name it whatever you want, and you can revert the name back just by going reset source name, or you can remove the source outright. So now we can see that I can see the audio here. We can also see it here. I can control it on either side. So if I'm turning the knob up and down, or if I use the fader, it represents the same thing both sides. We can also mute one of two ways. If you're using the software, you can just click this right here. Or if you're over here, you can just click in the knob like so. So because of the integration between these, I can actually control the physical volume and the mute of my microphone. You saw that it actually physically muted the device. That's not the case for all the other devices. You can mute them to yourselves, but if you were sending it out to somewhere else, it wouldn't necessarily mute unless you did a little bit of creative routing and stuff. We'll talk about some of those scenarios towards the end, but for now, we're just gonna continue with the startup. So we've got our microphone in here. And also if you wanna change the color of these, if you have some kind of preference, you can double click on the color here and then you can just change them up and I'll make it nice gold here and then you can do that for all of these so the second one let's make this one for our music so i'm going to take that and i'm going to call it music right off the bat you don't have to rename them but it's a nice way to just be able to see on your screen what's what so now i'm going to take over here we have our applications up and i've got spotify right here and that's what i use so i'm going to drag it in and we'll turn that up and then when i press play here you won't hear it, but I will. And you can see the representation both here and you can even see the volume going there. So I can turn it down and now I'm hearing it very faintly in my headphones. And control is as easy as that. And what's cool is you can actually add multiple sources to any of these knobs. So say I had another microphone that I might use instead of this microphone. Say sometimes I used my headset microphone. I can also drag that in and then control that at the same time. And then the next thing I might want to have my browser set up so I could throw Chrome in here. And then that way I control the volume of whatever's playing through my browser if I'm watching YouTube or whatever other things I could be doing on there. And it's important to know too, that there are a lot of applications obviously that aren't showing up here right now. And it's literally because just the way Windows recognizes applications is only when audio is physically passing through. So for example, when you're not playing Spotify and it's not up, you can see there's this little unlinked thing here. And what that essentially means is Windows doesn't recognize the device that you have here anymore. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It just means that it can't find it. So once you start up Spotify, this will start up right away, no problem. But if Spotify hadn't been open when I started this video, it actually wouldn't have been under the applications. I would have had to start it and then it would have shown up. This is also true of any game you're going to play. So you can set up a game thing here. This is true of Discord, Skype, Teams, all those different applications, because you can set up a whole chat knob on here as well, and then change the volume of your chat coming into your headphones. So the last thing we can do here, we'll set up just a personal listening device. You don't have to do this, but I'm choosing to. And what that actually means is controlling this area here. So let's set up listening devices, just like the other mixers and the other tutorials 
tutorials that I showed you. We can set up two different devices here and quickly switch through them. So we can click the drop down here and see all of our different listening devices. So what I'm looking for is the headphones that I'm currently wearing. So it's these Arctis Pro Wireless. Then the second one, I can set up my speaker output or something like that. And clicking this just switches between my two listening devices. If I want to switch without having this application up, which I mean is kind of the whole point, all you have to do is hold down any one of these knobs for about a second and it switches over just like that. So that if you want to get your headphones off and you want to move to your speakers, you can just hit this really fast. The whole point of the device is so you don't have to keep going into each individual application or into the audio settings in Windows to actually make any of these changes. They can all be done through this. Now the software works and stuff, but the point is to get it set up so then you can do it here. Now I showed you that I put the personal listening device on the last knob and that was on purpose so I could show you what happens next. When I'm listening to all my sources here and I just want to turn everything down all at once, I can actually control the knob. So you can see that it's controlling both the knob for and where my personal listening device is. So that's what the personal listening device is specifically for in the software. Uh, again, you don't need to use it because you can turn down each individual thing in your headphones at any time just by turning down the source here. So when you break it all down, you can customize this any way you want. You can have multiple things on a single knob to control a lot of different devices at once. Or if you use one device at a time, say I'm going to use Spotify or I'm going to use Chrome, you can put both of those on the same knob because you'll only really be controlling one at a time, but you'll at least be set up to control as many things as you want on just these four knobs, and it's pretty fantastic. Now, I did mention it doesn't go out to OBS or anything like that. Now, let's just get theoretical here for a second. Now, the Beacon Mix is not designed to be the Beacon Mix Create. It's not meant to send out to DAWs or to uh, stream software or anything like that, but there is a theoretical way to do it. So let's just do a little brain exercise and sort it out. Say you had a program like Voice Meter. I don't don't actually have it, but say that you did. You could go into the app volume and device preferences in Windows and you could route individual sources like Spotify, like Chrome and stuff like that into different voice meter destinations. Then you could put the outputs from the voice meter into the beacon mix and then control those individually. Then you could put those voice meter outputs into your OBS or something like that and also put them onto your beacon mix. And then as you control the volume there, it would control in both spots. Is that a very convoluted solution compared to just having the mix create instead? Absolutely. And it's not what this is for. I'm just exercising my brain. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something, uh, make sure to hit the like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, all those awesome things that make you awesome people. You actually do get superpowers for like a split second. It's not really long enough to use them, but you'll feel it when you hit the like, trust me. If you want to see my other tutorials for the Beacon Mix Create and the Beacon Mic, you can find those videos here. Uh, the subscribe button's right below me. And until next time, gang, let's get to work.